hey what's up guys welcome back to the channel and this is vlog 11 and i just got off work and so many things are just running through my mind right now like what's today monday so many things has happened like over the weekend and so friday i don't know if my previous vlog i made a vlog about fasting on friday yeah, and then like I made a prayer petition and put it under my like prayer mat or whatever. Then I had to go to my mom's house and stay over there till Sunday. So it's almost like a three day, I don't know. Like for I didn't get back to my house till Sunday night. But anyways, today was like the first day. No, 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 backtrack till Sunday. So Sunday, the third day, cause it was, I fasted on Friday, Saturday, then Sunday at church. I went to my mom's church because I don't have a car. So that's why I had to stay over her house for so long. And the preacher, they, my mom's church, they had a guest preacher and he called everybody up to the front. It wasn't voluntary. It was one of those, everybody come up to the front to get, to um, get prayed for. I was in the third row. So I was one of the ones that was closest to the podium or whatever and so her church I don't really I wouldn't say I don't really like it but it's not really my type like I go to a more modern church hers is like older Pentecostal but it's not like a black Pentecostal Kojic church it's like it's, it's it's very mixed it's like white Asian Spanish people but I don't know I just it's not my first choice but anyways I didn't skip church because I wanted the word uh no matter where it comes from because you never know who's who's god's who god is going to use so i went to her church um and so he called everybody up to the front i was first and first up there couldn't even hide in the back not that i was going to but um so they're praying my eyes are closed my my hands are open you know open to him to our father and so, you know, they're, they're going around praying for people, anointing. So my, my eyes are closed and somebody comes and anoints me. As soon as they anoint my head with the oil, you know, I, I immediately like open my hands even more. Like, yes, pray for me. Like, yes, anoint me. Yes. Like, yes, I'm front row, baby. Like, get at me. And so it's a lady and she just starts touching my head and touching my shoulder and uh, she anoints my hands too like where Jesus nails was on the cross and so she just starts saying like give her direction God she's lost like just she's lost like just saying everything that I've basically felt and been praying about and so yes of course I start crying and so it's a very emotional experience because it's it's crazy how the spirit works it's like people that don't even know you i probably had a conversation with this lady maybe twice three times in over like three or four years like she's just a lady that goes to my mom's church and when i go to my mom's house i might go to her church but i usually go to my church and so um i have spiritual experiences at my church too i'd be crying snotty nose like i make sure to bring kleenex to my church too but i'm a cry baby period but my point is that she was saying some things in the spirit that there's no way that she could know like how i'm feeling on the inside and what to pray for if it's not by the spirit and so she was just saying things to me like believe like just believe you know and just praying for direction over my life then somebody else came over there this whole time i mean my eyes are closed but then she asked me to open my eyes and look at her so she could talk to me and she was just like believe like like it's god is here in your life like he's going to give you direction like you'll you'll be fine and then I closed my eyes again because she kept praying. And then somebody else came over me, oh, um, touched me. It was like, restoration, restoration, restoration. And I'm just thanking God, like, yes, thank you, Jesus, or whatever. And so, I don't know. I just felt like really, I felt like, because I've been praying and fasting and I just wasn't sure if like God was really hearing. Like, I know he hears me, but it's like, are you answering me though? Like, are you writing this down in your godly heavenly notepad? you know like all right i'm gonna get the nala soon you know what i'm saying like just hello and so when she, they prayed for me on that sunday i was like all right bet like i feel i feel better but i always feel better after a good cry anyway but um then after church 
the person that was saying restoration, restoration, he came up to me again. He was like, it's just been on my spirit. Like just that word, restoration, restoration. And he grabbed my hand. He was like, restoration, restoration. He said it like seven times. And I'm, each time he said restoration, because I'm thinking it's going to be like the last time. And it don't be, he said it again. I just be like, thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. And so that was yesterday, Sunday. So today, Monday, so after that happens, I'm just like, okay, we not doing no more perks, um, no more smoking or whatever. And I, and I always say that, but if you have never been like addicted to drugs, then you don't really know <laughs> until like you start craving for them or whatever. But anyways, I said all that to say like today, Monday was like my first real day. Cause if it's not like a pill or like, if it's not a pill, then it's like a smoke. And if it's not a smoke, then it's like a pill. And it's just like, I need something to relax. It's not that I need to get high. It's not like I take 30 pills. It's like, I take one pill, smoke a little bit, like just to calm my nerves. Like I mean, I should probably run to re to release those endorphins or something like that. And so, um, so today was like my first day, like, okay, we not, if, if if I perish, I perish. Like in the words of, of Esther, like if we go, if I get these withdrawals where I feel irritated, then God, like you, we're just going to be holding hands like all day, all day. Me and God, we're going to be holding hands. If I feel something, like I'm just going to sit down and just pray. And I did, like I did that, like all day. I was trying to clean up my house, like do stuff to distract my mind from, like wanting to go get something and so I was gonna I was um I was cleaning up doing laundry um cleaning up the um kitchen and then I just I just start moving like Speedy Gonzalez and so I just get tired and I was like I don't want to tire myself out so I'm gonna do everything in like 15 minute in increments like okay work for 15 minutes set my um timer do get as many dishes done put as many loads in, in the laundry as I can in 15 minutes and then sit down for 10 minutes take a break read a scripture you know scroll not scroll but just like on, on the bible app like read one of the apps I'm enrolled in like 30 apps but um just do something to just like I don't know just get my mind off of it and so I had to be to work at three today and so on the way to work like I've been wanting a car and I've been wanting on my prayer list I I was talking mad big like I was like you know what? I'm gonna get a beach I'm uh, not a beach I'm gonna get a house by the beach a five bedroom house by the beach I was only looking at like million dollar homes if the homes are not like 700k and over i'm not getting it like just because i want i want a nice big house by the beach you know what i'm saying i want a hellcat you know everything i talked about in like vlog one or vlog two whatever vlog that was and but like a couple days ago i was like you know what when you know i was realizing like what's important in life i was telling god you know i was like you know what i don't really need like a hellcat per se but I do want a Challenger, but I'm not going to get a V6. Like, I'm going to get an SRT, like like a, like a V8, like a Scat Pack or something. But, you know, I don't have to get, like, a Hellcat. I'm not trying to be a celebrity. I'm not trying to really get no attention. I don't, like, I like fast cars. So, you know, I'm not about to get a family van. I don't, I don't want that. It's just me and my daughter, just, you know, big boss and little boss, just us two. You know what I'm saying? I just need a little two-seater. I don't. You know, I like what I like. And, you know, God made me like that for a reason. I'm not going to try to, like, tone myself down. Like, oh, I should get a Honda. I don't want a Honda. I don't want a Nissan. I don't. I do not. And I feel like this world is so big and God is so abundant. I, I can get a V8. Like, come on. It's not like I'm asking for a Benz. You know what I'm saying? So I went from Hellcat. I changed my prayer. And it made me think of the prayer when um, it says, like, uh, an unstable man... A back and forth man is unstable in like all his ways and that's why I'm never getting at that. But I was just like, just I just said that God just because it's like, I don't want to do too much. So this morning, I'm in faith. I'm looking at challengers online because I don't have a car, but I know I'm about to get one because baby, I got to get around for this purpose of mine that God has got going for me. So I'm looking at challengers. Lo and behold, I'm looking at Hellcats. Somehow I gravitated towards it. I mean, I'm looking at V8s too. Just because obviously they, they, they are cheaper. 
Um, but at the end of the day, I don't have any money. So it really doesn't. Whatever money I'm getting for the challenger, it ain't going to be mine. It's going to be God's. <laughs> so it doesn't really matter. Uh, but somehow God just told me the car, the original Hellcat that I was looking at is at a car dealership two miles down the street from my house. So I'm looking at challengers close to me. And so, of course, the Hellcat is popping up and in my head, I just go before work, go over there and anoint the uh, Hellcat. And I'm watching all these YouTube videos about acting out in faith. You know what I'm saying? You know, don't expect things to just drop from the sky or somebody's going to come and save you. Like, yes, God will bless you, but you got to go out there and move in faith. And so it just popped up in my mind to just go to the car dealership. You don't got to ask them a price. You don't got to say you want it. Just because you know that that's your car, go to the dealership and anoint the car. So I went to the dealership, y'all. And I asked them, I was like, yeah, I'm looking for this Indigo Blue um, Hellcat that I seen online. I want to see it in person. They was like, um, it's right over there. I was like, thank you so much. So I'm walking in there in my work uniform, not uniform, outfit. It got like bleach stains on it. I'm not even matching. I'm in like workout clothes and like garden boots you know and so everyone's looking at me because this is like a really nice like i'm looking at a hellcat like i'm not looking at no new like jeep or something like that and mind you this challenge like they have challenges outside but this one is like on the inside of the building like so people definitely can't steal it and so i was like thanks um and so the guy's like, you don't want to buy that car. You don't want, you, you don't want to purchase that one. The uh, hood is messed up. I was like, just the hood? Uh, that's it? He was like, yeah. I was like, okay, thanks. Well, I was told to come here for this car. But um, yeah, so I'm just go over there and look at it. And he was like, okay, cool. So I go and head over to the car. I circle around it, just looking at the wheels and, lo and looking at the hood that he told me was messed up, which I don't see any... I don't think they would have a car on display in there with a messed up hood. I felt like he was trying to discourage me from buying the car. But nevertheless, it's not any of my business because it's my car, bro. So I go in there. I inspect the car. I get inside of the car. When I look up, like everybody is looking at me like, who is this woman getting in this $73,000 car? And one guy, he's like, um, do you need help with anything? I was like, no, I just came for the car. He was like, oh, you just wanted to look at it? And then by that time, like, I had just, I was already on my way out the door. Like, as soon as I got in the car, I, I brought my olive oil in my purse. As y'all can see, I brought my olive oil with me to the, um, to the dealership. And I get in the car, and I didn't, I didn't want them to know I was anointing the car. So I tried to do it, like, all sneakily. And so I, I anointed the, the inside of the car. And then I just dipped out. I was like, all right, thanks, you guys. And then that was it. And everybody was just like staring at me because I was talking so casually like, yeah, I came for the Hellcat. Like, I don't want to see no, like I was told to come for this car. Like I'm about my father's business. But anyways, that's that. And I just got in my car on the way to work. Like, I cannot believe like, you know what? It, it was put on my heart to do that. Like I'm moving in faith. Like, you know, I backtracked. I said, I just wanted a regular challenger, you know, but it said I it, it was in my spirit to go anoint the the Hellcat, and so that's that. And so boom, I'm at work or whatever on break. I'm on Instagram on my T page, and this other Christian herbalist messages me, and they're like, I would like to collab and you know invest and you know in in your business and help you out and woo woo. And I was like, oh, that's so thankful. Like I really appreciate that because I don't really, you know, do my teas that often anymore. Like, I feel like God is, you know, calling me somewhere else. And, you know, they were just talking to me like they always knew me. And, you know, they were just saying some things like, um, I don't know. It was just like a lot of inspirational stuff. But I, this, what I wanted to make this vlog about was that it's after the conversation with that page on Instagram, it just made me rethink my whole life my whole entire life all over again and i feel like the conversation with that instagram page was a divine encounter just because i fasted on friday i had that spiritual i don't want to say awakening on sunday because i've been knew i was lost 
God need to find me. But just, you know, just that spiritual encounter on Sunday and then going to anoint the Hellcat today, like is just all, all, all the synchronicities, if I say that right, are just like lining up. So like he said, he said his name was Kevin. So I know it's a guy, but um, things he was telling me because he was like, how come you aren't doing your teas anymore and i was just like i feel like it was an ishmael not an isaac i did that when i was kind of like in the world like on my own like i wanted my own business you know i feel like i feel like whatever i do i'm still going to incorporate herbs into it but i feel like god is telling me to take care of the homeless like maybe like taking care of people and like nourishing other people is like my purpose and my passion like i said that to him and he replied, I wrote it down. He said, what do you like to do for yourself if it doesn't involve other people? And so, of course, the first thing that comes to my mind is like, like, what do you mean? Like my other hobbies? Like, I didn't want this to be like a business turning it into a personal conversation. So like, what do you like to do on the side? And that's no shade. It's just like, mm, I just don't want to go there. But I'm thinking he means like, do I like to do art or do I like to go for walks in the park or on the beach or something like that? And then he was, he said something else, but I wrote down, well, he, he was mentioning how, you know, like, um, God just loves you madly. Like his love just shines on you so deeply. And he was like, he doesn't. He, he was saying something like many times we think that we need to do something for God, but he needs conviction. That's a place where purpose never dies out. And it just made me think like first, like after he said that conviction and that's where purpose never dies out, it made me backtrack to his first question about what do you like to do for yourself if it doesn't involve people? It went from my mind thinking that he's talking about like, what do I like to do in my alone time to like outside of me feeling like my purpose and my passion is taking care of other people what about me and it just i don't know why i just clicked in my mind. and then to, for him to mention like god loves me so deeply and his love shines on me and this is somebody that just randomly messaged me but it just had me thinking like yo like i just had an epiphany like a what if epiphany and the, a what if epiphany is is that like what if this whole time this what i've been calling my purpose and taking care of other people and you know healing others and you know because i want to be um a counselor i want to be a therapist i want to be an, an herbalist i want to take care of the, the homeless and all of those involved in investing and in taking care of and making sure other people are mentally physically and and emotionally you know straight it's it's all about investing in, in other people so his question what do you like to do for yourself if it doesn't involve other people and i never i don't think i have ever considered my calling to be anything outside of like other people and when i thought about it i it made me reflect like am i operating out of a place of pain because to be transparent i've always felt like missionary work or anything that's involving being compassion, compassionate for other people was my purpose because of the pain that I've always felt in my childhood. I didn't ever feel like I received the love that I, ne that I needed to. Like, yes, I'm sure my mother did the best that she could, but she was not emotionally available for me. Yes, my father did the best that he could, but he operated only out of a place that, you know, where he grew up in the South and, you know, that's just, and then as a black man in America, like that's just, they both did the best that they could, but I don't believe that, that, that I just believe that I should have been loved in a different way because I'm so sensitive and parents can only love you like if they get to know you but they have this idea of who their children are in their head and how they were raised and how they were loved so that's how they show love and so I don't ever want anybody to feel like 
you know, they're not cared for or they're not loved because I know how that feels. And so I felt like, okay, let me take care of other people so they don't feel like that. I've always felt like that was my purpose. And now his question, this random person on Instagram, his question just made me reconsider my entire 29 years of my life. Like, like it just made me think of like, you know, like say if an artist is a successful artist, you know, because they like to paint and, you know, they create beautiful paintings. I don't know, because like in their childhood, like that's what they did in their alone time when, you know, to like recover from whatever. And they just so happen to be good at it when really their calling is to like be some type of engineer or, or something like that. But because they're so good at painting and, you know, that's just a place from where comfort came that they thought that that's you know they're supposed to be like like an artist and the whole time they're supposed to be like an engineer or something and it just made me think but they don't know that they're supposed to be like an engineer like they you know science interests them but they never pursued it because they've always done painting that's where they feel emotionally comfortable like i've always felt emotionally comfortable loving on other people because i don't want anybody to ever felt like how dark i felt in my childhood i don't want anybody to feel like that suicidal like that darkness like that that's something that i overcame and because i overcame that with the grace of god i don't want other people to feel that way so and then it went from that to like you know where the bible says take care of the orphans and the widows like that's our duty as christians like take care of your brother and sister so it was like i used my pain to fuel what i thought was my purpose by making it biblical or scriptural and so his and so his question just made me think about that and it's like oh my god like do i even know who i am i don't i don't even i don't i don't know it's like you and it's crazy because i just made a vlog about god gave me a new identity and now it's like my eyes are opening to was like is this even my real identity like is this is what I feel like my purpose and my passion in compassion and taking care of others like the homeless, counseling, missionary work. Is that me operating out of pain when I thought that that was my calling? And then for him to say like this random stranger reiterating, like constantly reiterating, like God loves you so much. Like he loves you so deeply. Like his love is shining on you. Like Kevin, I asked it like his name is Kevin. I was like, Kevin, I didn't ask it. Like I real life asked him. I was like, Kevin, okay, who are you? And I said, just kidding. Cause I was kidding. Like in a sarcastic manner, like, bro, who are you? You know, like, are you some angelic messenger? Like, why are you telling me all of this? And it's not, you know, of course I was being sarcastic only because like I'm thinking about these questions that he's asking me and all this thing all these things are just coming to the forefront of my mind like and then for him to say he needs conviction that like that's a place where purpose never dies out because what if you know these compassionate platforms are not is not my purpose that's just something that I like to do like something that's going to aid me in what I'm truly called to do and is and I was just thinking like I remember in my prayers, like, God, teach me how to love you authentically. And having this conversation with Kevin, thinking about my prayers and asking God, like, I don't know how to open up my heart. Like, I just really don't. And it's crazy because I feel like I love so deeply. It's like I say I love God, but the word says to love him, you know, and being obedient because he first loved us. So I was like, OK, I be trying to tell God during prayers, like, I love you. I love you. And it feels weird saying it. But it's crazy because I don't have a problem saying I love you to my daughter. And I do love my daughter like one thousand percent and it's just like maybe because i didn't feel it from my mother or my father like i don't know how to receive god's love to really love him back like i don't know and it, and, it, and it blows my mind because it's like i've been in relationships like the last one i just got up i felt like i loved him so much and, I, and it just got to a point where just sacrificing myself so much. And it's like, bro, do I even know what love is? Like, I say I love so hard, but is it coming from a place of, like, emptiness, of, like, pain? And I feel like a lot of people actually do that. I don't know. It's, <laughs> it's, it's just a lot going on in my mind. Like, I just, I just, I just want a blank slate. 
Like, I, I thought, I, I really thought I was growing somewhere. Like, oh, I'm going to walk intentional and I'm going to walk with purpose. And I know my purpose and I'm going to take care of the homeless with Jack's Dollar Cookies. And I'm going to heal people with my herbal teas. And I'm going to be a therapist. And it's like, am I hurt? Like, am I hurt? Like, am I doing that to avoid my own like my, my own issues like let's focus on your pain I'm gonna try to solve your your issues instead of focusing on my own issues because I have a hard time telling God that I love him and I don't know why I don't know why I don't know why bro but it's just it's just made me reflect on so much and I just wanted to say that I didn't really have anything that like I really I didn't have any I had a lot of epiphanies but I just wanted to vlog and just say that like this this is where I am on this journey and I'm sorry for making this video for so long but it, it's just been so much we'll see how what what comes up on vlog 12 all right bye